Good afternoon, everybody. I have a quick video for you today. And today we are talking about the overnight sensation bookshelf speakers that you can find at Parts Express for about 120 to $200. These are eight ohm bookshelf speakers. They are capable of handling up to 50 watts of power. They have specs that are listed on Parts Express website, but we'll talk about that a little bit later. Now, without these bookshelf speakers, these DIY bookshelf speakers, there is no way that I would have ever owned the CSS Crichton 1TDX, my favorite bookshelf speakers. Uh, prior to having these overnight sensations, I actually had a pair of ELAC Unify reference 2.0s, the UB52s. And because of that, I was actually on the web page or the Facebook page for ELAC, and I would participate fairly regularly on that page. So anyways, at one point I put a picture up of my kids actually deconstructing a Pioneer subwoofer that happened to be made by Andrew Jones. And little did I know, Andrew Jones saw the picture of my kids and just as a joke said, yeah, that's probably going to nullify your warranty. To which I responded, thank you, Mr. Jones, but this subwoofer has not been in my system for a long time. Anyways, that led to a, a discussion. He encouraged me to continue to let my kids play around with electronics, to take them apart, see how they worked. And while we were discussing that, he suggested these DIY speakers to build with my kids, these overnight sensations. The price was right. I think I bought these for, what, maybe a little over $100 a year and a half ago or two years ago. They came in the mail. I took them out and I said, oh my gosh, I don't know how to do this. Thankfully, Andrew Jones said that if I had any questions, I should get a hold of him and he would help me out. He's really excited about seeing kids participating in building speakers. And he gave me some suggestions that helped me with my soldering skills, helped me with teaching the kids how a sub or how a woofer works, how a tweeter works, how a crossover works. And me and my kids just had a great time building. Now, if you look too closely at this, and if you open it up, you would notice that the crossover componentry gets not the great, greatest soldering work because I had a six-year-old and an eight-year-old building it. But they did it, and it works, and they don't burn when I turn them on. Um, if you notice the paint job, my kids painted these on their own. They sanded them. They put polyurethane coating on them and then when I wasn't looking the kids painted the inside of the boxes too they took forever to dry and they might have been stuck to the table that they painted them on outside but they're proud of it I was proud of the kids after we built the crossover together uh, after they painted it we screwed them in we plugged them in and they worked exactly how they were intended to work. These were great speakers to build with my kids. And then I put them in the system and I listened to them and I enjoyed them because my kids built them. And then I became, well, and then I made the error of realizing that I'm an audiophile and I started picking them apart which was a mistake. It took away from the joy of the speakers, it took away from my kids' joy, but I learned that I had some workarounds with it. These speakers, while the bass, honestly, I would not expect these to produce anything of quality under even maybe 150 Hertz. The, the bass, when crossed over properly with a subwoofer, 
and making sure that the full spectrum of the sound is divided between the speakers and the crossover. These integrate really well. The mid-range. The mid-range is probably the best part of these speakers. It actually sounds pretty full. Uh, it gets the heart of the music right. The tweeter. Well, there, I haven't had listening fatigue for these. I don't think it is the most natural sound for orchestral music, for piano, and for female vocals. It can sound a little strained. But for my kids, Shoot, these would have been the best speakers I had in my house up until the age of like 35. And for my kids, these are amazing. I have them plugged into their thrift store amplifier upstairs in their room and they love it. They rock it out and every single time they play it, it puts a smile on my face. Are they audiophile grade? I don't know what that is. Are there speakers that are better for $200? Sure. But these put a smile on my face every single time. The crossover componentry is fun to build and a challenge. The paint job is just like any paint job. Uh, you get what you put into it. My kids just threw a lot of paint on and guess what? This is their work of art but it was fun and these are fun. Can my kids listen to them all the time? Absolutely. Can my wife listen to them all the time? Absolutely. Can every friend that we've ever had over listen to these and enjoy them thoroughly? Absolutely. But I'm the idiot. I'm the one who decided that I wanted to see this whole soundscape of audiophile land. And I learned that I need to have a crossover to my subwoofer to be able to handle the bass because the bass, it's, it's boomy. It needs some help because it can't handle the low notes. The mid-range, I honestly am satisfied with the mid-range. And the tweeter, it's not natural, but it works. It gets the stuff into the room that you want. But ultimately, the thing that I'm most grateful for this, because of Andrew Jones' suggestion, is I have great memories with my kids. They have a sound system that they enjoy listening to the music. And because of these speakers, because of Andrew Jones, my kids are learning to fall in love with electronics and taking all kinds of crap apart. Our old oven, our speakers, old computers, amplifiers. What else have they taken apart? A blender. Um, they took apart the toilet the other day, which I didn't want them to, but they did anyways. Uh, so be careful of that. Once they learn to take stuff apart, you're gonna have to teach them how to put it back together. But it's been a joy. And for the audio file in me, I could live with these in a desktop setup in my bedroom at listening volumes maybe under 75 db i think they need a subwoofer to get rid of some of the bass that i don't love but ultimately for the audiophile side of me these were the tests that i used for building my crichtons these were the ones that hey if it didn't go well i learned and then i could build something different and I built the Crichtons and I love them. So, should you get them? If you're building them with somebody, absolutely. If this is your first try at building speakers, absolutely. If you want to build something like the CSS Audio Crichton 1 TDX speakers and you're worried about whether or not you'll be able to, try on these first. I think for what they are, they're great. They have been a gigantic stepping stone for me and my audiophile journey, and they have been speakers that have allowed my family to fall in love with music. I don't think we're ever gonna get rid of them.
I know my kids won't. Okay, that's all I got for you today. I, as always, appreciate you watching. Thank you. Have a great day.